Hi, I'm Claire Butré, R&D Technical Leader at Quality Assistance, and in this short video, I will present data obtained on the analysis of adeno-associated viral vectors, or AAVs, by DLS. Adeno-associated viral vectors are built of a capsid containing a genome, and they are used to deliver therapeutic genes. The capsid has an icosahedral shape, so 20 faces and 12 vertices. The particle size is around 20 nanometer, and these capsids are built from three viral proteins called VP1, VP2, and VP3, where VP1 is the longest and VP3 the smallest. The amino sequence from VP3 is common to the three proteins. The entire capsid is composed of around 60 of these proteins, where VP3 is the most abundant of the three proteins, with an assume ratio of 10 VP3 for 1 VP2 and 1 VP1. Overall, the capsid has a molecular weight of around 3.7 megadalton. In addition, AAVs are found with several serotypes, which differ in the tropism. The genome inside is DNA, single-stranded, and has a size of around 5 kilobase, which means a molecular weight of around 1.5 megadalton. There are a number of critical quality attributes on such a molecule, either on the DNA for its identity and integrity, or on the protein. For the protein, the amino acid sequence and the presence of various chemical modifications, as well as the VP ratio as identity and integrity test. In addition, the aggregation status is also a CQA and should be controlled as AAVs are prone to aggregation and sensitive to freeze-thaw cycles. In this study, we focused on the measure of the aggregation status with dynamic light scattering. DLS, or dynamic light scattering, is a versatile technique giving information on particles' diameter. The technique is based on the Brownian motion of particles and measures the speed at which the particles are diffusing in the solvent. Particles in suspension are illuminated by laser, and the particles will scatter some of the light that hit them. In a solution, as the particles are in constant movement, the light scattered by, part by the particles is fluctuating over time. It is dynamic, and the light intensity as a function of time is what is measured. This data set is then converted into a correlogram, the figure on the right of the slide. In more details, for a small particle, the diffusion is fast, which means more fluctuations of the intensity as a function of time than for a large particle moving rather slowly. These are the figures on the left. The coilogram is a representation of these signal changes, showing if the signal changes are performed at a slow or fast pace. If we look at the coilogram in details, the first part is the decay which is the indication of the size. So for a small particle, decay is faster than for a large one. This is what is represented here. The second part, the slope, is an indication of the polydispersity, and the signal goes back to a baseline. From this, using the Stokes-Einstein equation, based on the diffusion coefficient, it is possible to plot the size distribution of the particles. In this example, the size distribution is plotted as an intensity distribution but the values of size distribution can be reported by number, intensity, or volume, as we can see on these plots. If we consider these two distributions of particles with diameters of 5 and 50 nanometers, they are present in equal numbers, so ratio 1 to 1. If this is converted into volume, the ratio of the peaks would change to 1 to 1000. This is related to the calculation of the volume of a sphere. If this is converted into an intensity distribution, the ratio is now 1 to 1 million, because intensity is proportional to the radius to the power 6, according to Rayleigh approximation. We currently have three zeta sizer instruments available at Quality Assistance, and one in particular is dedicated to AAV's analysis in a biosafety level 2 environment. Although this approach will not be presented today, one of the instruments can also perform measurements in multi-angle mode, which provides information on particle concentration additionally to size. For method development purposes, we used an empty AAV9 sample and set common parameters on the, on the equipment. For instance, two minutes equilibration, three measurements with 30 seconds delay. For this measure, we use disposable cuvettes of 70 microliter, and the results by intensity show two populations. A first population around 30 nanometer corresponding to the expected size, and the second one around 500 nanometer. By looking at the distribution in volume, we see that the presence of the large population is not significant. 
This was a successful first test. Based on this, several parameters from the sample preparation were evaluated. We first checked the influence of the dilution on the signal and the type of diluent. A sample analyzed as is, or diluted 10 times in PBS buffer, will result in the same size distribution by intensity, and a particle diameter of 32 nanometers is calculated. This corresponds uh, here as well to the expected value. When the sample is analyzed after 10 times dilution in water, displayed uh, in the middle picture on this slide, the distribution is slightly changed, but the diameter of the peak one is still around 32 nanometer, only with a lower percentage intensity, only 88% compared to the 97%. Based on this, it was decided to analyze the samples as is. If dilution is required, it should be performed in the formulation buffer to avoid any changes to the aggregation status. The next parameter evaluated for sample preparation was the influence of sonication on the sample. For this, we used two samples. First, with AAV2 empty, a particle diameter of 400 nanometer was measured, indicating aggregation of the AAV sample. After one minute of sonication, a diameter of 39 nanometer is measured, which is more or less the size of a monomeric AAV, indicating that aggregation was reversible. For the second sample, Two populations are detected when the sample is measured as is, a first peak representing 77% in intensity and a diameter of 34 nanometer, and a second peak representing 23% and a diameter of 450 nanometer. After a one minute sonication, the size distribution does not change. With the same percentage of each population and comparable particle size measured, Based on this, and depending on the aim of the analysis, the sonication step and its influence on the result should be assessed. During this study, we also evaluated the sample stability at 20 degrees by performing measurement at T0 and at three other time points, 30, 60 and 90 minutes. Particle diameter measured is around 34 nanometer at the four time points, circled in orange on the table. If we look at the difference measured between the different time points and the time zero, we see that the difference, the value circled in red, is negligible for the diameter, for measurements in intensity and in volume. In conclusion, the AAV sample is stable for 90 minutes at 20 degrees in the data sizer. In parallel to this, to evaluate the robustness of the method, we performed the analysis at three temperatures, so 20 degrees, which was defined in the method condition and compared the results when measurements were performed at 25 and 15 degrees. If we look at the absolute difference of the size measured at 20 and 25 or between 15 and 20 degrees for the measurement both by intensity and by volume, we see that this difference is minor and negligible. This shows that the method is robust. Finally, we check the performance of the method by first determining the repeatability of the measure. For one day on one equipment, the measure was performed six times. Size determination is displayed by intensity and volume on this table. Circled in orange, we see low RSD values of 2 or 1.2% for determination by intensity or by volume. As no sample preparation is required for this experiment, intermediate precision was performed by the same analyst, but on a second equipment and on a second day. The measurement was performed six times as well, and the repeatability values on this are also low with RSD values just above 1%. The intermediate precision determined from these 12 measurements also show good results with RSD values of 1.7 or 1.4% depending on the determination either by intensity or by volume. For a validation study, criteria on intermediate precision are usually set at 10%. So in this study, the criterion would be met. In conclusion, we have developed a method for the determination of size distribution of AAVs and for the different AAV serotypes. The results presented show that the method is robust and that the performance of the method is good. This method can be used for routine determination of the size distribution of AAVs. To read in more details about this study, please have a look at our application note, which is available on the website of Quality Assistance. Thank you.